Hey, hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. Today I have a fun, simple, useful, easy lesson for us about what are drop voicings for guitarists. Now, drop voicings and drop chords make all kinds of sense if you're looking at a piano keyboard and you get explained, get it explained that way. But as guitarists, it is really confusing. And I've had my share of having to kind of scratch my head about this and, and look it up a bunch of times and figure out, wait, is this chord a drop chord, drop two chord, drop th three chord? What do these mean? Why are they labeled that way? Well, as guitarists, it's just not as obvious to us. So it's confusing, but it's good to know because so many people use these terms and it's nice to have the labels, the correct labels, and they're quick to explain the voicings. So if we can make sense of what they are on the fretboard, this can be a big win for us. So I'm going to just show in a fretboard way how we can make sense of what a drop two voicing is and why it's called that, and then what a drop three voicing is and why it's called that. And an awesome trick for what you can do anytime you have a, a guitar chord shape, uh, specifically a seventh chord, that's when drop voicings, drop two, drop three, that's when they are used when we're using seventh chords. If you have any seventh chord shape, I have a little trick you can use to figure out if it's a drop voicing and what kind it is. So I think that's going to be really helpful. Let's dive right in and not waste any time. We are going to start with this voicing that is a C major seven chord in close position. So this is the root, the third, the fifth, and the major seven. So this is just like if you stack up in thirds on a piano keyboard and that's kind of how we can do it on the guitar. Now, a drop two voicing means that we take the second note from the top. So if you start counting from the highest note and you count one, even though this is the root down here, we're just counting for the sake of how do we find this note that is that is two that we're supposed to drop. Well, this is the highest note. This is the second from the highest note. That's the note we are dropping. So drop two means we're dropping the second from the highest note. Drop three will mean we're going to drop this third from the highest note. So just for the sake of these drop voicings, think of that uh, counting down from the highest note. It's not that we're calling the, those chord tones any particular number. You're just saying, okay, one, two, drop two, okay, dropping it down an octave. So this is another thing on the guitar. We want to be able to see our octave shapes and move notes around easily, instantly, swiftly. We need this to be just obvious to us. I have two really great videos uh, about this, and I will put those links in the description. One, especially about how to see and move notes around with octaves all over the fretboard so you can find voicings of any chord like this. So we're moving this down. We need to see really quickly, okay, that's an octave right there. And the other video has exercises for how to get that down. So check that out if you need to. Um, but now we have another voicing of this C major seven. So this is C major seven and it was a close position voicing and now it's an open position voicing because not everything is not as close together uh, as it can be. Uh, now that's totally playable. We might be a little more familiar with it if we move this B note over here. Uh, now that's a bit of a pinky stretch, but that's a common voicing, a uh, common shape that is an inversion of something that you will find uh, rather familiar, I believe. So now we're just in, in a pickle though, because we're like, okay, cool, we got this shape. Maybe we know that inversion of C major seven, but for a lot of us, that's not super familiar looking. So I'm going to do a little work around here and don't get overwhelmed because the trick I'm going to show you to figure out if any voicing is a drop chord will, will be clean and easy after this. But here's what I'm going to do. If we know that this is the root still, and that's the third, and that's the seven, and that's the five, and we want to know the fretboard that well with our voicings, this is the five. So I'm going to now invert this chord by moving every chord tone down the string that it's on down to the next closest chord tone. So if this is five, then I'm going to move it down to three. So I'm moving that down to three. Okay, this is one. I'm going to move it down to the next closest chord tone, which is seven. This is three. I'm moving it down to one. And this is seven. So I'm moving it down to five. Now I did that really quickly, but that's a process how you can find any inversion shape of any chord along the same string set. Great way to find and practice inversion shapes. I have a video about that as well, which I will put in the description also. So you can check those out for further practicing if you need to. Let's do it again until we see a shape that we're super familiar with. So this is the three of the chord. This is the third. So three, two, 
one. And if if that stuff is confusing, like how do how do we see that quickly? My chord theory uh, playlist that walks through kind of from beginning to uh, easy to advanced how to see chord theory on the fretboard is something I highly recommend. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Okay, we're at the root here. So this is the seven and we have to move it down here. Here would be six, here would be five. That's the next uh, chord tone down. This is the root, we're moving it down to seven. This is five, we're moving it down to three. Now, all of this I'm just doing in front of you, not saying you should do that unless you feel good about going through that process or that's what you wanna practice. I just did that to get us to this shape here, which uh, I hope that a lot of us are, are looking at and saying, hey, I, I feel like I've played that before. I know what that is. This is C major seven. This is the most common shape of C major seven. That's not an open string uh, chord shape. Here's the root, here's five, here's seven, here's three. So this is a drop two voicing of major seven. And of course you can play it anywhere that's on the root C, but if you play it here, then you're playing E major seven. Um, and move it around anywhere, et cetera. So, okay, that's a drop two voicing. So I, I started with our close position voicing and said, okay, that, that's what we start with. You drop the two, the second note from the top. I moved this over here, figured out uh, like, okay, that is a direct inversion along these strings of this familiar uh, kind of very common uh, major seven chord shape. So now if you wanna just take all that in as introductory information of like, oh, okay, that's where it comes from, got it. And, and now we can see why if, if you're a keyboard player, it's that's gonna make so much more sense uh, a lot more easily because you can just play that initial voicing and just move that shape down and, and see it. But we have to kind of wiggle things around so much. Here's the trick though, take any shape, any seventh chord shape that you're playing, take the bottom note and move it up an octave and then count from the highest note to what when you count from the highest note, what number is that note that you just moved? Now, that doesn't have to be the root, it could be anything. But when you move that up and you say, okay, here's the highest note, next down is this. Oh, that's the one that moved, that's drop two. Okay, because if you count from the highest note, one, this is next down, this is next down, this is next down, if you count down descending. So, okay, that proves to us that this is a drop two voicing. So, if we did that with another just random voicing, if we just take this voicing and we say, okay, is this drop two? Is it drop three? What is it? And it could be interpreted as many things, but let's say it's a B minor seven chord where that's the root and it's moved up here. So it's an inversion of a B minor seven chord. Okay, well, I'm gonna take the top note and move it up an octave. So again, seeing these octave, uh, I call it octave displacement on the fretboard a lot of times, um, would, that can mean a few things, but I use that for uh, moving notes around on the fretboard. Move that note up an octave and you can move it here or here either way, and then look for, so I'll move it here, and then say, okay, from the top note over here, oh yeah, one, two, it's just the next one over, it's the, it's the second note from the highest, so this is a drop two voicing as well, drop two voicing. So that's the really practical um, takeaway from this is that little trick that we can do with any voicing. So let's talk about drop three voicings and it's just gonna be the same process. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the G root here, this is G, and then we're making a G major seven chord just to keep working with major seven. This is the root, this is the third, this is the fifth, and this is the seven. Drop three, as I said earlier, is gonna be if you count from the top note, one, two, three, what's the third highest note up? Move that down an octave. We wanna see our octaves super well, super clearly. Okay, then we, if you, we can see it as a familiar shape, fine. We might need to move some things around. I'm gonna move this note over to here. Same note, that's G. That's G, and one of those two fretboard clarity videos I recommended already that will be in the description shows how to move the unison notes around as well and exercises for that. Well, this is a common inversion shape of major seven, uh, but if you don't see it clearly yet, let's do that inversion situation so we can turn it into a shape that is very common. This is the third of the chord, so I'm moving it down to the root there. This is the root, so I'm moving it down to seven. This is the five, so I'm moving it down to three, and this is the seven, so I'm moving it down to five, and voila, we get the G major seven voicing, one of the most common major seven voicings if the root is on the sixth string. So this is a drop three voicing. Now I'm giving you all this kind of fretboard uh, move around stuff and all this explanation because if you really want to know this, um, it helps to see that uh, process. You don't have to memorize that process, but just to see that instead of just 
having someone say, yes, remember forever that this is a drop three voicing. Just remember that, you know, it's good to know why we started with that shape. That was the close position. We took the third note, we moved it down an octave. That was a direct inversion shape of this voicing that we are very familiar with. Now let's do our test with this. If you take this bottom note and you move it up an octave, and then you count from the highest one, two, three, four in that order. Okay. It's the third from the highest note. So it's a drop three voicing. So you can do that with any voicing you want. So if we took that minor seven shape, this one that we kind of inverted before, and we move this note up an octave, and now we count down one, two, three, four. Okay. It's the third highest note. So that's kind of cool. Now this note is B, you move it up here and that note is B that's an inversion of the same chord. And we figured out already that this voicing is a drop two voicing. So for the most part, um, for years and years, and still pretty much, I just kind of ignore this idea of, is it drop two? Is it drop three? Just because it's so, um, it's, it's impractical on the guitar to think of it because it's so indirect for us. We don't have this really direct relationship and association with thinking of it as these drop voicings because of how much we have to move things around to see it. But because it is such a common term, um, instead of just memorizing that this type of shape is a drop two voicing and that this type of shape is a drop three voicing, now you know why, and now you can take any shape that is a seventh chord and test it out by moving the bottom note up an octave and then counting, is it the second from the top or is it the third from the top that you just moved, which makes it either drop two or drop three. If you're interested in playing jazz chords at all, I highly recommend downloading my free PDF booklet called Any Jazz Chord. It's just a really awesome, straightforward method on how to interpret literally any jazz chord that's out there with a few shapes that sound great. So if you're interested in that, you can download that. There's a link at the top of the description for it. I'm here every Tuesday with a new lesson. That's it for this lesson. Let me know if you liked it in the comments or hit that like button. I will be back next week with another one. Until then, happy practicing and take care. Mm -hmm.